In our Sunrise Smart Start, we have made it to Election Day. Polls opening just 45 minutes ago across the state. The Monroe County Board of Elections offering details about what today's primary day will entail. Eriketa Cost is live this morning with what you need to know. Eriketa, good morning. Good morning. A lot of people are focused on that two party a majority race for governor. And before heading into the polls, there are some things you're going to want to check. But first, as a voter, firstly, you must be registered either a Democrat or Republican for the primary election. Uh, the BOE tells us you should have received a notice in the mail a few months ago on this, including polling location. You can also check this on MonroeCounty.gov. Staff say they were originally prepping for an additional election day for primaries in August, but that won't be the case anymore. So they've overprepared, they say, and they're ready to go. Here's a bit of what you can expect on the ballot. It really depends on where you live, but the vast majority of individuals here in Monroe County will see the governor's race, the lieutenant governor's race, both on the on, uh, Democrat and on the Republican side in regards to primaries. And then depending on where you live, you may have um, city court um, here in the city of Rochester, and then there'll be some other races depending on very specifically what election districts that you are in because there are some committee seats that are also up for um, primaries this year. We are firm believers here that every election is the big election um, because it's extremely important important right to exercise your right. Now all polling locations are ADA accessible. There will also be uh, many Spanish interpreters on those sites. So, of course, uh, we will keep the track of results as they come in tonight on News 8 and polls will be open until 9 p.m. In Rochester, Eric had a cost News 8. Ericetta, thank you. Over 6,000 people have voted early in Monroe County this year. That is higher than last year's primary by about 1,000 voters. And for those heading to the polls this morning, James, uh, not a bad morning. Might need a light jacket, though. Yeah, I, I think so. Maybe long sleeve shirt. Uh, there is a, we're a little chilly uh, to start off this morning, at least seasonal here. Uh, 51 degrees, about uh, 5 to 10 degrees below average for you. Thanks to that lack of humidity, uh, certainly then reward yourself uh, with the Zweigels uh, this afternoon. Temperatures warming into the mid-70s later today. Uh, if you're along Lake Ontario, I'll give you upper 60s, a little bit cooler there, but otherwise I do have some warmer air in the extended forecast. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. Mark Valley. All right, James, thank you. We'll take you up by the lake in our sunrise traffic as well. That one accident we mentioned just a few minutes ago uh, by Beach Ave and Lake Avenue. Apart from that, 390, 490, and 590 all on time at this hour. Well, happening nationally, the Supreme Court again ruling in favor of religious plaintiffs. The high court ruling that a former Washington State High School football coach had a right to pray on the field immediately after games. Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson has more. In a 6-3 ruling Monday, the Supreme Court said a former Washington State High School football coach has the right to pray. We can pray on football fields, we can pray in schools, ain't nothing stop. It was a victory for Joseph Kennedy, who claimed that the Bremerton School District violated his religious freedom by telling him he couldn't pray so publicly after the games. This is a landmark religious liberty victory for teachers and coaches across the country. First Liberty attorney Stephanie Taub believes this will protect all religious Americans. They do have a right to religious expression. They do have a right to their religious identity, and they can't be treated as second-class citizens just because of that. But Americans United CEO Rachel Lasser says this ruling goes too far. Right now, church-state separation is in serious jeopardy. Lasser is worried about the impact this will have on students of different faiths. Shocking thing to happen and to have come from one of the three branches of the American government that is founded upon this principle. That was Rashad Hudson reporting the court ultimately said that the coach's prayer is not government speech even though he was a government employee at the time. In some other news, after a weekend marked by massive nationwide protests, the Supreme Court's historic decision striking down its nearly 50-year-old precedent on abortion rights is now sparking some new legal challenges. Protesters returning to the high court for a fourth straight day. Mississippi, the state at the heart of the case that led to the Supreme Court ruling, certifying its trigger law yesterday, banning nearly all abortions in 10 days. We need to change the balance 
and have pro-choice legislators who have the power to make decisions about whether this constitutional right will be in law. I think this is likely to all be litigated out, dealt with in the various states around the country through the democratic process. 16 Democratic states and Washington, D.C. have laws that protect abortion rights. That includes New York. Last night, a judge issued a temporary restraining order on Utah's trigger ban after Planned Parenthood filed illegal challenges to block the trigger laws in that state as well as Idaho and Kentucky. Well, at least 46 people were found dead of heat-related injuries inside a semi-truck Monday in San Antonio, Texas. Federal authorities are investigating. Officials say 16 others were taken to the hospital, including four pediatric patients. Three people were taken into custody, but at this time, officials are saying it is unknown whether they are connected to the fatal incident. And to come and die. That's terrible. I'm in shock. I feel sorry for the people. I really do. I didn't realize it was that many people. I just hope it's nobody we know. The nationalities and ages of the victims have not been confirmed. At least three people are dead after an Amtrak train hit a truck in rural Missouri. Federal investigators will arrive there this morning to begin investigating. The train was traveling from Los Angeles to Chicago when it hit a truck at an uncontrolled crossing. More than 200 people were on board at the time. Helicopters carried victims to several local hospitals. We've got an update this morning. The four girls who went missing from a Penfield foster home on Sunday night have been found. One was found earlier in the day yesterday. Police say the other three were brought home around 8 o'clock last night. We're told Pathways to Peace found two of the missing girls. Officials say all of them were found safely and in good health. Police have identified a person killed late last Friday in Rochester. Officers say they found 37-year-old Eddie Blanding shot on Dewey Avenue inside an apartment. Blanding was pronounced dead at the scene. Police said he did not live at that location. No suspects are in custody as police continue their investigation. Turning now to the latest on COVID-19, the COVID-19 vaccines for kids ages six months to five years are starting to roll out in our area. The CDC approved vaccinations for that age group earlier this month. Officials with Rochester Regional Health say they will start distributing vaccines to patients as soon as possible. That means those with regular checkups on the books will get their shots first. Our pediatric clinics will have uh, it available this week, although it'll likely just be uh, given as part of routine well child visits that are already scheduled this week. Um, we're really looking at next week um, after the the fourth of um, being able to start uh, having clinics at each site. RRH will have the Pfizer vaccine for now. We're told the Moderna shot will be available in the fall. At URMC, Galasano Children's Hospital has begun scheduling vaccinations for kids in this age group, again, six months to five years. The Pfizer vaccine is available to those who will schedule an appointment. Parents, a reminder, bring your CDC vaccine cards, insurance cards, as well as an ID. Here's what some folks will be talking about at the water cooler this morning. Medical students across the pond in the UK using hologram patients to learn at Cambridge University Hospitals. The technology being made available as soon as next year enables students to learn in a simulated but highly realistic scenario. The University of Cambridge will conduct research to evaluate the project's impact for both the students and patients as well. Interesting. Hmm. Very interesting there. Yeah, I covered a story, it reminds me of uh, some doctors locally that 3D print organs mm -hmm. and then put that in a 3D printed body and then go through that to, let's say, remove a tumor from a lung or something like that. Yep. Uh, and uh, practice makes perfect, right? Yeah. We used to just go into those surgeries cold, but if you can practice it, uh, why not? Uh, we are not practicing elect, uh, voting today. We're actually voting today. Uh, it is a great forecast uh, for you here. Mid-70s uh, by the afternoon. Just a picture-perfect day. Let's savor today. Now, we've got a little bit warmer as we get into tomorrow. Your Wednesday will feature a couple of rain showers. Uh, we'll say a lone shower. Most of us going to remain dry. Uh, and then we continue to warm Thursday, upper 80s to near 90 degrees. I think we get there on Friday. 
That's going to come with a couple of showers and thunderstorms there, and I think those trickle into Saturday as well. So it's Tuesday. We're uh, voting today. We're starting to think about plans for our July 4th that generally look pretty good. I, I am expecting a dry kind of stretch there for Sunday and into uh, Monday there. So uh, Monday is the official uh, July 4th mm -hmm. holiday. Uh, so uh, nice to see that forecast shouldn't have too many issues uh, with rain showers. Just watching something a little bit on uh, Friday night and Saturday. And that 84 on Monday is pretty much right on point for this time of year, right? Yeah, that is close to average. I don't expect any significant heat waves. If you're doing any traveling, all the heat still out west. They've got uh, some big numbers, 90s, 100s, certainly uh, all the way up until looks like uh, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin. So. All right, James, thank you, and thanks so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update in about 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great day.